Good day everybody and welcome back to the flight deck. Over the next few videos we're going to be taking a look at the Douglas DC-6A, which is the cargo variant of the DC-6. We're going to be using this in an upcoming series as a cargo version. So I thought I would uh, do a little introduction to the aircraft if you haven't seen it before and how I fly it. One uh, additional thing with this one is we're not going fully traditional. This is modern day so a GPS has been installed to assist with navigation on the series and we will be using that as we will uh, show you in uh, in this series of videos so we're here at Manchester Airport the aircraft has been prepped and ready to go you can see it's empty there's no cargo on it but we're going to be ferrying it down to London Heathrow which is the starting point of the series that will be coming soon so it's in Caribou uh, livery which is our channel livery and uh, we will be flying her down uh, on about a one hour flight at 11,000 feet. So let's hop into the cockpit and we'll discuss it a little bit more inside. All right, so here we are, we have the EFB, we're loaded up with fuel and everything. It is good to go and here is the cockpit. As you can see, it is a four engine propeller driven radial, piston radial and uh, lots of dials and gauges and stuff. It does have a, a rudimentary uh, gyro pilot, which is pretty good. And if we look up, there's more switches and everything up here. And of course, we have a modern day GPS as well. Now this aircraft is a three person aircraft. Not only do you have the pilot and the first officer, you have a flight engineer who sits here in the jump seat and helps control stuff such as engine power settings and things like that. Uh, I use the automatic flight engineer, which we can, we have on the uh, board here. You can fly this by yourself, doing everything yourself. Uh, but with the stream and everything like that, I prefer to keep the ability to um, have an assist, or in this case, two assists with the first officer and the engineer. So there's a lot of stuff that they do to get the aircraft ready to go as well. So we are going to start with that. So moving down here to the uh, panel here you can see we've got all the doors and everything still open so if we pop out you can see here on the cargo version of the aircraft there's two main cargo holds there's the front one and the rear one and then there's also a secondary door here on the side to get into the back and if we come around to here you can see the stairs leading up to the cockpit those stairs are integral to the aircraft and come along with us so we don't have to worry about that and as you can see we're hooked up to a battery cart when we depart, we'll be starting uh, two engines on stand. We're then going to push out and start the other two. And we are running FSLTL to give us some tr live traffic here. So let's hop back on board. And we can start closing everything up. So we're going to uh, pull up the stairs. As we can see them coming up on this side. There we go they're now in place and we can come over here and close the cabin door and it is now closed and we can tell them to close the cargo doors as well since nothing else has to go in there and this is going to take a little while the secondary door closes rather quickly but these are hydraulic driven main doors so that's going to take a minute to come down so as they're closing up we can get uh, Fred, our flight engineer, to start with his uh, check. So we're going to remove the pedo covers. We'll leave the uh, we'll take the wheel chocks off since the parking brake is on. And we can come over here to the AFE, and he'll do the before start checks and get the aircraft powered up. There he goes. Completed. Voice recorder. Tasted. Oil coolers and cow flaps. Water and position. Fuel and fluids. Checked. Pressurization. Set. Manifold and duct pressure. Checked. Radios. 
checked. Doors and hatches. Just waiting on those doors to close. Closed. There they go. Door warning lights. Out. Gear pins. Removed. Three on board. Seat belts and pedals. Adjusted. Throttles. Set to idle. Propellers. Forward and three. Start checks complete. <clears throat> okay, we're ready for engine start. But there's a couple things we got to do before we do that. First thing we got to come over to the panel over here. This is our pressurization. We have to tell it how high we're going to be flying. So we're going to turn the flight dial to 11,000 feet. And you'll see the cabin one start to move shortly. And that's what our cabin pressure will come up to. So there we go. So there's 11,000 feet. So our cabin is going to depressurize to be about 1,500 feet in altitude. All right, the next thing we're going to do is our GPS setup. So we'll hit OK and then OK. And it's going to find the satellites. What I want to do is pull up the charts and I want to get the uh, VOR frequencies. So we're going to be flying to two VORs as part of our route. Uh, and uh, I'm going to pull up the frequencies. So the first one is 1157. So we're going to come into VOR1, which is on the GPS. And we're going to go uh, 1157. There we go. And then the second one, which we're going to put in as the standby is going to be 11365 it's 11365 so that's now on the standby there and for comms we're going to go 1228 as we uh, normally would on VATSIM which is what we'll be flying this aircraft on in the series all right, so that's now set. So we're going to come over here. This is our, our COM2, NAV2. So COM2 is going to go 121. Oops. One I'm going to make sure we're on the right one there. 121.5. That is the um, guard channel. We'll put that on there. And I'm going to put the ILS frequency for our landing in on 2, just so that we have it already preset, 1103. Let's flip that over. We'll take that down to 3. So 1103 is our um, ILS frequency. And what we'll do is we'll put the number 2 here, 124, just as a backup. Uh, oh, sorry, one one three six five. There we go. So those are all in and set. So over here, you can see the GPS has come up, and we are good there. But we are going to come in and put in our procedures because it will follow them. So when we depart out of Manchester, we're departing on runway two three right, and we're going to be doing the list all to Romeo departures we're gonna go into procedures we're gonna set departure oops uh, we're gonna go for departure and it's gonna be the list to Romeo departure and runway two three right we will load that in, and there we go. Once we're in the air, we'll put in our arrival. But that's going to give us our departure. So if we come over to our nav setting, 
it will now show uh, we zoom in it'll show the the departure now as we fly out and then turn down towards that first VOR at TNT so that is looking really good so we are all set up there last thing we're gonna do is come down we can uh, our before start is ready to go the only thing we're hooked up to is the ground power and using GSX for the push we are going to have to uh, start the engines after the whole pushback procedure is done so we'll call for our push and they will come out and do their thing as you can see it's fairly busy out here at Manchester today And again, Thomas Cook has serviced the aircraft and got it ready for this journey we're going to be Captain, doing. We are ready for pushback. And we're going to uh, pop back inside so it's less noisy. We will open up the uh, windows though. Hmm, maybe not. Departure check completed. Bypass pin inserted. Alright, so they're going to come and do the hookup. So what the flight engineer has done is he set up the engines for the, for the starting on the engine number three. So mixture has gone to rich. He's turned the mags to both. Engine mode selector start is to engine number three. He's come on and put the uh, main fuel tank boost pump on uh, uh, for number three engine. Locking gear and we are ready to crank it and get her going. So we're gonna start, once we're ready to push back, we'll start three and four on the stand, and then we'll let them disconnect the ground power unit, push us back, and we'll start uh, one and two. And we're gonna be pushing back, going tail to the right and nose to the left. We're going to push back onto taxiway delta. So it's going to be nose to the left and uh, tail right. Release parking brakes. All right, so he's ready to release, but we're ready to start. So we're all set here. So we're going to hold down the start switch. The engineer's going to count to 12, and then we're going to prime and boost. Release parking brakes. And he's just going to keep repeating that. Release parking brakes. Prime and boost. Good start on engine number three. Release parking brakes. All right, what we're waiting for is these switches to kick off. They're starting to kick off now, so we can come down here. Release parking brakes. Mixture is gonna go all the way up. We're gonna turn the mags to both. We're going to turn the engine start selector to Release engine four, brakes. fuel pump coming on, and we can start number four. Three, six. Release parking brakes. Five, Twelve. Boost and prime. Release parking brakes. Number four up and running. So once these switches click out. That means that we have a good start. Release parking brakes. Release parking brakes. All right, so it's a good start. We come down here now. Release parking brakes. We're going to go to the rent manager. Ground power unit can come off, and we can release the parking brakes. Commencing push. All engines clear. Start at will. All right, so we're going to come down now for engine number two, and we'll push the mixture all the way up. We're going to come up. Mags will go to both. Engine mode selector to engine number two. Pumps on and engine start. Uh, sure 
why you're not. Oh. Forgot about the uh, ground power there. Alright, there's engine one. Let's switch over to the plane battery. Once the starts come off, we'll do engine number one. So batteries to both, start selector to one, fuel pump on, and starting the engine. We don't want to delay this too much because we are running off the plane battery. Six. Five. Set parking brakes. Twelve. Prime and boost, parking brakes are set. Your confirmation for good engine start. That uh, looks like we got the good start on the other engine as well. A little quick look outside, everything is up and running. I guess we technically could also start all four on stand and then have them push us back with all the engines running. That would be fine as well. So good start on all four and we are parking brake set. So we'll just come back down for the after start checklist. Start selected bus bumps. Off and off. Battery switch. Plane battery. Generators and inverters. Checked and on. Emergency lights. Armed. Ground power. Removed. After start checks complete. Alright, after start checks are complete. We can confirm good engine, good engine start. They're going to get themselves ready to disconnect. And uh, we'll leave it there for this video. Thanks for coming along for the first part. That was the, the prep and uh, getting ready for push and engine start. Join us again on the next one where we will taxi out, get ready for takeoff. Uh, we'll head up to climb and we will uh, see how the autopilot does taking us up to our climb altitude on our departure out of uh, Manchester. See you on the next one. Bye for now. Unlocking gear. Tow truck disconnected. Bypass pin removed.